Hello, everyone. So, I'm Shweta. I'm here with Gideon today, the man himself. I'm sure all of you are eager. So, the topic for today is the world of creative inspiration. Good evening, everyone. I'm Gideon Hermosa, and I am so honored to be here in India to be with you guys. And I hope you will learn a lot from our topic for today. You want to go over it? Okay. So, for today's topic, I'll just summarize it. We will be um, discussing about evolving concepts, um, eight ways to maximize our creativity, um, the design principles, of course. Um, concept translation, and of course, the most exciting part will be the mood board challenge, which we will be um, discussing how we can come up with a good mood board or an excellent mood board to present for our clients. So the first uh, step is evolving concepts. So in this, the basic idea is to brainstorm first. In any design process, it's very important. The minute you brainstorm, you come up with lovely ideas, uh, more innovative processes to do. Uh, so you can go about it by uh, forming your own brief for the project. Of course, nowadays, all the brides come up with their own Pinterest mood boards with their kind of uh, liking or they're inspired by something. They have their own brief to give. But the key is to draw your own brief too because that's where you stand out. Uh, the other one is to set a goal. The minute you set a goal for your uh, concept research process, it becomes easier to pitch one or two concepts what you think is unique instead of pitching like a, a lot of concepts to them. The next thing to do is to mind map. So this is again essential. This is my version of it. I'm sure each one of you are creative here. You have your own process to go about it. But the mind map is basically to understand what factors influence your process. That is, in case you think of a concept and then that needs to fit the location you pick. So that again, in turn, it might be an indoor location or an outdoor location. So all that can be factored into, into like a table to create your own way to come up with a concept in that particular location. Same thing with the production factors. In the location, there might be so many challenges. So while you're thinking about the concept, if you can keep all of these factors in mind, it will really help to make everybody's life in, in the planning process easier. Moving on to eight ways to maximize your creativity. Okay. So moving on forward, I'll be discussing the eight ways to maximize our creativity. Uh, as we all know, we are in a creative industry, and I know everyone in this room is very creative. Um, we just need to maximize it to, to pitch um, excellent ideas for a client. And I have, or I have least, I listed some uh, ways to do it. First, of course, discovery. Moving out of the box travels new ideas. We always uh, would want to come up with new ideas, but how can we come up with a good ideas if we don't discover things? Like for myself, for example, I always, I, my, me and I mean my friends knows that I love traveling and I always um, get ideas, updated ideas from my travels. And when you do that, um, you open up bigger um, ideas to, to your clients. If you are uh, updated with something is going on, if you don't, um, how do you call it? If you don't, um, if you're open, if you're open your mind into new ideas, like when you travel, you go to places, you experience the culture, you experience locals, you you, you, you always get new ideas. Like for me, when I travel, I always love going um, to, um, to display windows of malls wherever city I, I, I go. Because usually, I get um, different ideas from the color combinations, doing textures, how they install installations, and those little things, we always can adapt um, these ideas and to bring 
um, into our clients. Next will be the vibe. Of course, whenever we do events, there's always a vibe. Whenever a bride comes to us, they always give us the idea that they want. Some bride will tell you, I want the vibe of an outdoor, but, it an in but the setting will be an indoor. So sometimes, I mean, nowadays, we don't just work on a theme. Most of the time, we always work on the concept. And the concept usually involves the vibe. So the feel, the tone, and the emotions into your designs, when this comes together, you can create or you can maximize your creativity, right? So it is always important to always ask your client, what vibe do you want? Do you want something formal? Do you want something casual? What your what will be your uh, what your guests would want to feel when they enter the room? What type of vibe? Do you want something fun? If you have clients or you have young couple who wants a fun vibe, those little things we always would want to consider to maximize our creativity. Yeah, to add to that, I'm sure the couples these days have so much knowledge and then they really want to make the wedding about themselves first, what they like and a lot to do with what their experiences are. So this really gives way for that. Yeah, and young generations are very into travels and they experience different things. So sometimes exactly. they, they go to you and they just feel, oh, I want this vibe. Yes. Not really an exact theme, but the vibe of the event. Yeah. Next will be relationship. Um, sorry. Can we go back to that one? Yeah, relationship. Building relationship with the, our clients is really important because knowing your clients about their personality, their background, their stories, will actually give you uh, creativity to give them a more personalized service. Most of our clients, or most people actually, have been asking me, how come Gideon, you create new things every time, while sometimes some of your events are with the same theme or concept? Uh, my answer to that question most of the time is that because I always give time to, to um, to know my clients well, I always give time to to ask them questions, to to, to give them, uh, to, uh, to 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 take time to know them well, so that we can make each and every event more personalized. And I believe that every client is a unique one. Every client has different background, has different stories. So that means you can come up with different ideas. Absolutely, also. exactly right, because. Talking is key. Thinking and talking is where we all come in. Without talking, we can't do new concepts. It's, it's impossible. Talk to the bride, talk to the family, talk to your team, talk to the vendors, talk to anyone, but you never know where the concept comes from. Exactly. Uh, collaboration is also another factor where we can actually um, maximize our creativity. Well, each and every one of us here do collaborate in every wedding, for sure. Because working with a team, with the same goal, uh, we can achieve a certain and yes. an spectacular event, Exactly right? like what we're doing right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so when you collaborate with your suppliers, it's always nice to discuss things and different ideas. Like, for example, you want this theme or vibe to be executed um, in, let's say, in, an, in a cake, for example, which you will be collaborating with a cake artist. So, like me, for example, I always take time to talk to them. We each exchange ideas how we can come up with, or how we can um, execute a concept, a unique concept for a client. So whenever you do that, you always collaborate, right? Even actually big brands do collaborate to come up with unique ideas also. Yes, each one comes with their own expertise in their own divisions. Exactly. So for example, um, a different collaboration such the one on the photos is actually an, a, an example of good collaboration. This wedding was taken two years ago. Um, it's actually a wedding during COVID wherein we collaborate with the couple um, 
they had a very small wedding because during that time, it's COVID. There's a lot of restrictions. So we col collaborated with them um, to give back to the community. So since they are, farm since they are a farmer by, um, by profession, both of, the, uh, uh, both of their family backgrounds is a farmer, so we thought of um, incorporating fruits and vegetables in, in their um, wedding. And, um, um, and we also promote a, at, at least a zero waste wedding, right? So we thought of like collaborating with them to give back to the community. So all these items that we displayed on the wedding day, uh, we came up with a community pantry the next day to donate to their locals. So, so some sort of collaborations like that can actually come up um, beautifully and yes, and um, it can be successful. It's in a always event. a win-win when it's a collab. Exactly. Next. Let's go next. Of course, technology. Um, I remember when I started doing weddings before, I only sketch for my clients. I get a, a blank um, band paper. I sketch the layout. I sketch everything. But look at how far the technology uh, come up now. So maximizing the use of technology, innovations, um, these tools, these modern tools usually can um, maximize our creativity also. What we normally do is that to come up with something new, I always talk to suppliers. For example, if we are dealing with a regular lights and sound supplier and Normally, in like the span of the year, they always invest on technology like the latest sounds or the latest lights or the latest LED. Sometimes I always talk to them, oh, if you have something new, please introduce these things to me first so that I will be the first one to introduce this kind of application, this kind of, let's say, ideas to the industry. And then everyone will follow, you know. So those little things, when you maximize um, the use of technology nowadays, you can come a long way, for sure. Trends. Yeah. Next will be trends. Yeah. Okay. Trends is always there. It comes, go on and on. It always changes every time, every season. But how uh, do we go about trends? Um, I always promote this thing. Um, don't just go with the trends. Why not create a trend, right? So we are all creative here. We have all unique ideas. And if you would want to adapt a trend, maybe you can like, apply it in a different way. Like for me, I always love seeing um, trends in fashion, which usually we adapt on um, designing things. Like I always check on the latest fashion show of brands. I always check on the latest, um, 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 the, la the latest trends in terms of like interior designs. But because if you guys will notice nowadays, our designs in events and weddings are being affected with the trends for fashion and um, interior design. Even, even the type of chairs that we use for events nowadays, if you will look uh, um, at these ideas, they're actually manufactured for home. Like these sofas usually, for example, they are usually manufactured for home, but being creative like us, sometimes um, we, we get these ideas that these, these are the latest furnitures or something, and we outsource these things and we use them for events, right? So those little things from furnitures, home lines and everything, we can actually use these ideas to elevate our designs. Of course, um, experience, your practice, your techniques and skills. It's always um, nice to learn from your experience. Like if you did a very good um, wedding, for example, this weekend, that experience you can turn 
into something different for the next weekend. Or if you experience, let's say, not so good thing about this wedding this weekend, for example, you can learn from your mistakes also. So having an experience will actually um, give us an idea to become better also. So, for example, if I learn a new technique on doing, let's say, an installation from one of my travels, and then I tried it in one event, and it became nice, but it's not that successful, I can, again, recreate that idea, and um, I can, like, correct the idea in a better way. We can do better next time, always. Exactly. Of course, commitment. Having a dedication and professionalism is really important and it elevates our creativity. So, um, if you're really committed, sometimes we have lots of ideas, sometimes we have a lots of um, design ideas, but you know, um, we are lack of commitment and professionalism. So being committed with what we usually do will actually elevate our design process also. Great. That was really insightful, Gideon. Next, going on to design principles. So in design, there are many principles you can follow, but we've put together five main ones which we think will help you as planners, designers, whatever you might name it, we still need mood boards, concepts, renders, and so on at the end of the day. You can adapt this to any design that you work on. The first one is balance. As the name says, so when you imaginally draw a line in between your image, symmetrically you can balance both sides of your image. That's the key of design. Naturally, mirror images work very well because it's easier to, it's easier on the eye. It looks good by nature. But when you choose asymmetrical designs as well, you can balance it. Like you can take a circle on one side and three circles on the other side. As you can see, the proportion is different, but the design is still balanced. Next, contrast. As the name suggests again, it's basically two opposites, any two opposites. Work with cool colors versus warm colors. Work with um, like a small shape versus a big shape. Anything, any two opposites always work. Next is emphasis. I don't see the slides moving. Yeah, that's emphasis. So the idea of emphasis is to create a focal point. Always have one focal element and work around everything else to support that element. Like you're seeing in this image, it's all bright colors, but the bright stands out. It's mainly because of the volume of the dress. It's not just the color. So the idea is to maximize on that focal point and work everything else around it. Yeah, it's always nice to have like a focal point when you design something so you can focus on that thing then everyone else will follow. Next, it's movement. So this is, you basically let the viewer's eye travel. Like you see in the image, it's one monotone backdrop different parts of the backdrop being highlighted by flowers, you naturally move through the image. That's how a human eye works. So this is a great way to create design again. The last one is unity. So here it's, you can work with different kind of elements. It can be any sort of elements, shapes, colors, all of it. But there's always one factor to keep it cohesive. Either you can unify it with colors, or you can unify it with some shapes, or it can be texture, anything. Anything that can put together all your elements in one space. Yeah. Quickly moving on. Um, next is concept translation. 
this is basically how we translate our discussed principles into the mode boards. The best way to do it is through activities. You can do this with your team, with your collab, with your clients, with anyone you wish. So if your inspiration is a city, you can take the shape of the building. Yeah, that one. So you can either choose a particular building in a city that you visited, and you can use the color as your focus, like you can see, and completely use a different theme for your event. Or you can take the shape of the building and create something else. So it all depends on where the inspiration is coming from, but how you use it creatively. Okay, so here are some ev actual events um, that we usually come up from a concept or a mood board then to reality. So it's like a, this one is like a Filipino fiesta that we conceptualized for a wedding that we envision um, a rice field for the ceremony. So this is how we executed everything. So it looks like a ceremony inside a rice field wherein guests are seated in between the stalks of the rice. So this is a very Filipiniana themed wedding that we created with, um, with the beach as the background. So if you guys will notice even the shapes of the chairs, the elements that we use, the grass that is located in between the seats of um, the aisle that looks like everyone is inside the rice field. So that's how we usually translate concept or mood board from, um, from the concept to, to, to the mood board. Uh, because it's always important to make, up, to, to make everything cohesive. This is a wedding that we pitched for a client. So that was the original mood board. And this was our actual execution wherein we got inspired by the Palace of Versailles. They really want that theme for their wedding because that's one of their favorite and memorable trip in Europe. So we executed the mood board into something like this. So it's always important that when we create a mood board, it's always uh, important that um, it's, um, you can execute well whatever you presented to our clients. This is an inspiration uh, came from a city which the client's favorite city and which they, 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 um, they met, which is Singapore, that we translated into something beautiful like this. So if you guys will notice, the structures from Singapore got, uh, um, became our main inspiration for this wedding. From um, the dome, from Gardens by the Bay, we executed the shapes into um, a waterfalls and an entrance tunnel up to, and we were inspired by the houses of Penarakan houses to, to adapt into the colors. And then from those colors, we executed them in the flowers. And of course, the Singapore um, um, Museum became the main highlight of the stage background where we projected different images throughout the night to create different vibe of Singapore. So those little things, you can actually navigate through your inspiration and sort out things from the shapes, colors, and everything to execute well in the event. This is an actual render and an actual execution that we did actually just last week before I came here. So we pitched this shape for the ceremony of our client, then we execute it in this way. So sometimes I understand that not every planner or designer does rendering, but at least you know how to put things together in your mood board. And it's very important. And later we will discuss how we can put everything together in, a, an, in an effective mood board. Right. So I think we're going to jump straight to the mood board challenge. 
So let's let's do it. Okay, that's actually an exciting part. Yes, so, let's get to it. I think they would. <laughs> can you explain what's what is the challenge? So we're gonna have a mood board challenge. Okay. We're gonna pick someone from the audience. audience. Yes, from the audience. Yes. And Some we will create an actual mood board for yes, we are her actually or going for to her client, the mood for example. Board yeah. And so you have we, all the stuff yeah, right we here. printed items from, um, we picked like random photos from online that we printed so that we can come up or we can create like an actual mood board for you guys to see yes. how we translate ideas. Who would want to volunteer to join us here on stage? Nikita. Oh, okay. What's her name? Nikita. You still didn't get my name, Gideon. Yeah, Forget I know. it. Sorry. <laughs> it's hard for me to <laughs> yes, pronounce he names. Still calls and me it's hard for me to remember <laughs> sometimes. I'm so sorry, guys. Okay, Hi. yeah. Please tell us your name. Hi, I'm Nikita. I run an event planning company called The Wedding People. Oh, what a beautiful presentation you've had today. And I'm very inspired by what you have just presented. Um, I have a very interesting challenge. I have an interesting couple okay. uh, who is looking to plan a, a wedding, mm -hmm. a very different, out-of-the-box wedding. So there's a particular brief for this. So this is for your client? This is for my client, okay. yeah. So I'm just going to give you a little brief about my client. Um, so the groom, he's a British architect who lives in London. And uh, he has a lot of projects uh, in Dubai and in London. Okay. The bride, she's Indian origin, uh, lived in Dubai most of her life. So but, she's uh, an Indian living in Dubai. Yeah, uh, but she studied fashion in London. So she's a fashion designer. She's a fashion designer. By oh, exciting. Yeah, yeah. But she uh, interestingly also likes to decorate homes. So she's also an interior. Uh, decorator by passion and uh, the couple recently went to India where they got engaged uh, where they met the bride's uh, relatives and the groom had proposed to the bride in a beautiful palace in Jaipur and uh, now they're looking for uh, for a wedding you know that that's modern fun and you know something really out of the box Nikita everybody wants this client <laughs> <laughs> okay, wow. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, I want you to put something really fun, and the brief is very clear. Modern art meets modern architecture. Where will be the wedding, for example? Uh, the wedding will be in India. The wedding will be in India, yeah. okay. And uh, they're looking for not very traditional events. Okay. They're looking for like a reception, a wedding ceremony, an after party, uh, you know, not the very regular events, so... Ah, not the usual... Not the usual Indian Sangeet, okay. Mehendi, yeah. Haldi. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay, and they're a fun couple? I mean, um, a totally fun, loving, uh, they love traveling. Also. So they have, like, friends, they travel quite often, and they, you know, this, this, they're looking for something really fun. Are they yeah. a good-looking couple? Yeah, oh, very nice. good-looking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they're very modern, so the... Uh, the groom is British. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And they met in? Uh, they met in London when she was studying for her master's. Uh, and she's a fashion designer. She's a fashion designer, yes. And also very interested in interiors. So, yeah. Nice. Wow. It's okay. an interesting challenge. How about the budget? Does they, do okay. they have like a, a maximum budget or something? Okay. So The most important so they, question, the budget. Of course. Sometimes so limits our creativity, yes. right? So they do pretty well for themselves and they come from good wealthy families. But the point is, uh, if you can convince them that what you're doing is really something that's out of the box, if it catches the eye, I don't think budget's really an issue here. It's all about getting it spot on with them. Time to be Gideonized. Oh my God. <laughs> this is challenging at the same time, exciting. So I think we have someone who will... We actually have some sort of photos here, like um, random photos 
um, that we almost printed. like how so all of us out of these photos we will be creating a mood board. Yes. I think we have a videographer who can. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Who can actually uh, so that you guys will see how are we gonna come up with the mood board? Um, yeah. I think we we need to show them. They can. Can we switch on the live video? So that people from the audience would see like how are we gonna create this. Okay, I'll start sorting out photos. But while we are sorting out photos, actually we can we can entertain questions from the audience. So that you know, um yeah, I think can we do that? Yeah, while we are sorting out photos for this mood board, we can actually entertain um questions from the audience. Any questions? Do we have any questions? <laughs> any questions? Maybe tell me, tell us more about your client so that we can, you know, um, our, so she's a fashion designer. Yeah. So she, she loves fashion. She loves, yeah. she designs clothes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. Yes. And um, yeah, so I, I forgot to tell you that, uh, like I said, they love to travel and uh, Dubai is one of their uh, favorite, favorite city. city? They, okay. they, they go to Dubai a lot. So maybe you can uh, take inspiration from Dubai's architecture, their culture. I mean, um, yeah. Do you have an exact venue already? Is it an outdoor, an indoor? Um, the ceremony itself is uh, going to be outdoor. The reception is uh, in a nice ballroom, indoor. And of course, the after party is also in, a, in an indoor, out, like there is an indoor outdoor space, so we can play around with uh, both parts. Yeah, can you come up here so you, uh, people from the audience would see how we sort photos? Because, you know, uh, when we research online there's a lot and a lot like millions of photos um are are online you know sometimes it's not easy to sort out photos based on its elements colors and it's hard to pitch to our client so um we've got i think more than 500 or less than, actually we have a less than a, less than a thousand photos here that we will be choosing elements and pieces to create a mood board for her client. Nobody has questions for Gideon Unsurfaced.
on the screen what is being happening right here on the table a photographer is making sure all of you can see if any of you guys have any questions popping up in your mind please feel free raise your hand and we'll make sure the mic reaches you keep your eyes on the screen and questions in your head We have a mic here, so give me the mic. Yes. So Gideon, while you are creating the mood board, could you please also take us through how you are selecting these pictures? Okay. Um, of course, before creating a, an actual mood board for a client, I always identify the keywords for the entire mood board. So from the information that she's uh, have been given, uh, she, she she gave us uh, for her client. Uh, the key um, words that I got from um, from this client are something modern, something architectural. She loves fashion because she's a fashion designer. So maybe we can consider those things to create the mood board. Some elements of like, actually, when she mentioned that she is... Um, a designer so probably she she loves something uh, uh, she loves the idea of doing let's say runway shows or something so I thought of like why don't we create a ceremony that looks like a fashion show but it's actually a wedding and for her entourage uh, dresses I am thinking of you know Maybe they can come up with like different shades of the same color palette, but different designs mm -hmm. that they look like um, people from the red carpet or something that wow. she designed or whatever. I'd love to be the bridesmaids on this one. Right? So those little things that we can come up with, actually, we can pitch those ideas to our client that actually resonates their personality. So I'm thinking like for the bridesmaids, we can pitch some sort of a color palette and then from there we can actually um, um, sometimes you know I, I also even ask um, what does their bridesmaids look like oh all right because that designs yeah because designs for the entourage of course um, the designer of the clothes will have the liberty to to um, um, to design for the clothes, but of course, if you're um, the planner, for example, or that who would want to create designs for for your client, I mean um, um, ideas for your client, you would want to come up with a unique idea that these um, suppliers will be collaborating with, right? Absolutely. So the color selection, the ideas that he's putting together on the mood board that you can see right here on the screen has just been given to Gideon and he's creating the mood board right in front of you live and this is how he works. If anybody can think of any questions, please raise your hands and he'll be more than happy to answer those questions while he's creating the mood board in front of you. Can, can we do two contrasting, like one colorful and one? Yeah, actually, is yeah, that fine? actually, yeah, we can do like a contrasting colors because they love to party, right? They love to party. So for sure, they want to have like a fun vibe for the after party, like full of entertainments because they're young. They want to dance until, until dawn for sure. So yeah, and I love... Like Vivian. I love architectural designs and most of my recent inspirations are coming from different architectures also. But that's why I love traveling because 
it really gives us, you know, um, different insights on the shapes, the colors, how you combine things, how you, um, how you, how how you execute ideas also. I think I missed the part. Is this couple Indian or for nationals? The groom is a British architect. Okay. The bride is Indian origin, uh -huh. but lived in Dubai All right. was, and studied in London. Okay. And uh, she's a keen eye in fashion. Okay. So, and he's a very good architect. So, fashion meets art meets architecture. Absolutely. Is they the both vibe. are into arts already. Technically, yeah. Yeah, technically, they're both into art. They in just like it's just a, like a different, you know type of art like the guy is in architectural design and she's into fashion design so it's different world but of course if we can create an idea that marries both world why not right so this actually happens to be a more difficult client because they are already into creative fields difficult to please clients we are almost done yeah, with they, the mood board they are, they are artistic like us also yes so can you bring them to Mahabalipuram? They would love the temples. <laughs> Where is that? So I'm sure uh, many of you may have questions related to how the mood board is being prepared. If you have any questions, please raise your hand. We'll make sure the mic reaches you and you can directly ask the question to Gideon here. I'm going to go check out the process right here. Here. We're all desperately waiting to see what the mood board brings. It looks fantastic. Love the lavender that you have picked up along with the blue. So let me ask this question on behalf of all, uh, the audience members here. That uh, so all the pictures that you've collected, these pictures you already have in your stock when you're preparing mood boards, or do you go through more and more in the stock? You know what? We we actually got a random bunch of pictures printed from Pinterest. That was the challenge. Okay. So he takes images from the random bunch of Pinterest images. Alright, so we are almost done here. We have picked up something colorful. We can see something green and lavender and pastels. And a lot of fashion here on the table. Ladies and gentlemen, we are almost done.
I think the cameraman right here is capturing everything. Can show them? Here, here, it is live here. Which camera? Which camera is live? This one? This one, this one. Yes. This one? Okay, yeah. Can we focus on this side? Yeah. Yeah. So if you guys will notice, so we, ca we came up with, um, um, how do you call this, a modern architectural slash fashion art themed wedding for this young couple, okay? Um, so uh, the idea is to translate their background into a mood board, which what we just did in a few minutes. It's actually hard. Usually I am given at least an overnight to, to come up with this challenge for a client, but yeah, we'll, we, yeah. This exactly. is a super challenge. Okay, so I always, we always, it, 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 and it's very important that you always um, include the branding as part of your mood board. So like the textures, the, um, the patterns, the, the, um, even the font sometimes, it's actually um, important. So if you guys will notice, we just um, picked some um, random, um, how do you call this? Um, uh, branding or um, logos, uh, which is very modern, very minimal. The patterns are into line. I mean, we call it line art, which is some sort of a, uh, an art that can resonate through the whole um, reception. So for the entourage, we thought of, can we focus on this one? Yeah, on this one. Yeah, so since she, yeah, can we, can we focus on this one? Yeah, so since she is a fashion designer, we thought of like, um, we thought of like, um, let her entourage shine per entourage. Like, you know, they have different, they will wear different shades of the same color palette but different designs and different cut based on their body shapes that looks like they are walking in a runway later on that we prepared for the ceremony. And for the ceremony area, um, yeah, so we thought of, where is that? Yeah, here. Can we, can we focus on this part? Yeah. Let me focus on this part. Yeah. So for the ceremony part, it's going to be a very um, structural designed um, ceremony where um, very structural ceremony wherein it looks like um, a runway show wherein um, seats are into different levels and everyone is facing the aisle looking at the stage area. So, uh... uh Gideon, I have a brilliant idea that came from the audience that why don't we keep the mood board ready right here for the audience to also see and yeah, speak of course, to you post this session. Yeah, because yeah we I think we'll quicken the process. We would need to We'll take up. this off stage. Off stage. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll quickly glue it up and it would be put up on display. Absolutely. So and I'm sure there will be a lot of questions it. coming up after they have closely seen it. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, can can I just discuss this part briefly? Yeah. So for the reception, ceiling installations. Can we focus on this? Oops. Okay. Yeah. Can we focus on this part? So for the reception part, we can focus on the ceiling installation wherein the shapes and the layout of the receptions are very architectural and flowers are very minimal. Then for the after party, we'll, have, we'll do something colorful since they are fun, young, and um, vibrant, happy couple. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully this couple is very happy with this mood board. <laughs>
I wish we have more time. Thank you. Thank you so much. We request both of you to kindly join in the middle of the stage for a group photograph. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.